Alrighty folks and welcome to the Hillbilly Kitchen. Today we're making millionaire spaghetti. Now this is a baked spaghetti. It's just got a few simple things in it but it takes spaghetti up to the next level. It's one of those comfort food casseroles that just I mean it's got it all. It's bubbly, it's cheesy, pasta, ground beef, marinara. It don't get no better than that. So what I've got here is a pound of ground beef and I've started frying it. I'm going to season it with a little salt and a little pepper. I've got a pound of spaghetti. You can use any pasta that you want. Um, I'm also going to put a little salt in my spaghetti water. Those of you who are new to cooking, that's one of the secrets to making some good pasta. You want to put a little salt in the water. Um, you could use, you know, like they had any pasta in this that you wanted to. You could use shells or spirals or just whatever. Uh, I'm also going to put just a little bit of garlic powder and onion powder in my ground beef. You could add any spices you wanted to. You could get fancy and chop up some onions and some bell peppers and stuff like that and put in here. But this is kind of a weeknight dinner. A special weeknight dinner, but a weeknight dinner. So we want to get it on the table, or in the oven and on the table, pretty quick. We don't want to spend all night chopping stuff. Now you can get um, the seasoned vegetables in the freezer, and they also sell them in the produce department. They're kind of expensive in the produce department. But you can get peppers and onions that are already chopped if you want them to go in your meat to season it with, and you want them quick. So kind of you can add whatever you want to this. Okay, let's talk about our ingredients for just a minute. Now, we've got ground beef and spaghetti sauce. That's spaghetti, you know. Everybody makes it that way. But we're going to turn this into a really rich, indulgent kind of casserole. So we have a half a pound of shredded cheese, eight ounces. I'm using a mozzarella blend. You can use whatever you wanted to. Um, you could use some mozzarella and Parmesan. You can fresh grate it. But again, this is kind of quick for a weeknight. We're going to get this in the oven in less than 30 minutes. We're going to try to get it in the oven in like 15 minutes. I've got a pound of spaghetti. Like I said, you can use any pasta you want to. Um, it don't matter what the shape is. But into the pasta, we are going to add a cup of cottage cheese about a quarter of a cup of sour cream, a half a stick of butter, which is a quarter of a cup, and a block, an eight ounce block of cream cheese. And we're gonna mix that in our pasta and put that in the pan. Then we're gonna put our sauce and our meat on top of it. And then we're gonna to top that with a shredded cheese. And it's just gonna, like I said, blend all together and just be absolutely wonderful. The perfect weeknight dinner if you want to do something a little bit special. Great for potlucks. And I'm making this one in this little aluminum pan here because I'm going to pack it up for Alex's freezer so that she's got some meals to eat after her baby is born. And I do want to thank all y'all who are praying for her and her baby and ask you to please continue to keep them in your prayers. Um, she's still got almost three months to go. And um, she definitely needs your prayers and she appreciates your prayers. So please keep them in your prayers. But this is a good dish. If you know someone or if maybe you're not going to be home to cook, you can make it up to the point where it goes in the oven. And then whoever's at home can pop it in the oven. Or if someone's having a baby or having a surgery or something, they can pop it in the oven and it's not a lot of work. They just put it in the oven until it gets bubbly and hot and brown on top and all that good stuff. It looks like there's a lot of stuff here. Now, if you shop sales, and I shop sales to get this, I'm going to make this casserole for under $10. And it would easily feed eight people, probably more. I mean, I can't imagine eating this in eight meals. And I'm sure there's folks out there with bigger appetites that can eat more. But, you know, easy, easy eight people. If you're taking it to a potluck or something, of course, it's going to go farther because people are eating everything there. <laughs> and it would be something good to make, you know, if you just wanted to have some company over. But anyway, we're just going to get this uh, ground beef brown. 
and this was pretty lean i got it on sale and it's ground round so there's not a whole lot of fat in here but if you want to drain your meat if it has excess fat in it definitely do drain it and if you're on a low fat diet definitely drain it if you're on a low calorie diet drain it okay our hamburger meat is definitely brown now it's done and where this was so lean it has absolutely no fat in it when i cook ground beef to go in spaghetti i normally leave it in some pretty good sized chunks but because this is a casserole i'm going to bust it up smaller i just like that texture better in casseroles uh, if you like bigger chunks of course you can leave it in bigger chunks I guess I could have asked Alex what she likes. Now, I'm going to heat everything up before I put this in the oven. So I'm going to go ahead and dump my sauce in my meat so that it's nice and hot. You don't necessarily have to do this because we are going to put it in the oven. But if you get everything hot before you put it in the oven, you won't have to bake it as long. And you want the whole jar of sauce on there. And kind of turn it down on low at this point because we don't want to burn it okay my pasta water is boiling here and now here's another secret to making good pasta i am going to break it in half just to make it easier to get in the pan before you put your pasta in your water no matter what kind of pasta you're making make sure your water is at a good rolling boil don't add pasta to cold water and keep it at a good rolling boil the whole time you're cooking it and this says cooks in eight minutes so that's what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and cook it for eight minutes now you don't want to cook it any extra time because you are going to be baking it too and if you didn't get it completely done it would finish cooking in the oven but we want to cook it according to the package directions while your spaghetti is boiling, give it a stir once or twice. That kind of keeps it all separated and helps it cook even. And keep an eye on your sauce while your spaghetti is cooking there because you don't want it to stick or burn or anything. And I do like simmering the jarred sauce a little bit. Like I said, I just think it makes it taste better. It kind of gets the flavor of the sauce in the meat better. Even though we're going to be making it, I still like it like this better. And also, we're if we get everything hot, like I said, it takes less time in the oven. While we're giving our spaghetti just a minute, um, I want to encourage y'all a little bit. I know that with all the stuff that's going on and the way groceries just keep getting higher and higher and higher and higher, and so does everything else, interest rate, mortgage rate, credit card limits just keep going up uh and you know all the other stuff going on our hope our strength is in the lord the bible tells us that and i know it's very hard to hold on to your faith when you're going through a trial when it seems to be getting worse and worse and worse and when there just seems to be no light at the end of the tunnel it seems like it's coming at us from all sides Proverbs 133 says, But those who hearken unto me shall dwell in safety and shall be quiet from the fear of evil. If we listen to God, don't just talk to Him, don't just ask Him for stuff, but listen to what He's saying. Go where He's leading you, and He'll take care of you. He will protect you from the evil, and He will quiet it. Our hope, our strength, it's in the Lord. And don't let go of Him when it gets rough. He'll calm it and make it quiet. Let's see how this spaghetti here is doing. I think we probably are about done. And go ahead and drain your spaghetti because we don't want all that water in there. And I'm also going to turn this down on low. And we're going to add all this other stuff, except for the cheese, into the spaghetti. And melt it. And I've seen folks just melt the butter in the spaghetti and then do like a layer out of the cream cheese and the cottage cheese. Um... 
if you do it that way you're going to have to bake it for a very long time or you're going to have a lot of lumps and it's still not going to evenly mix through your pasta so i like to mix this stuff in my spaghetti you've already got the pot dirty anyway you might as well and like i said heating it up now is going to save you a ton ton of time in the oven now all we want to do is melt this and get it hot and you are going to have to stir it while you're melting it and getting it hot if you don't it will stick now what you're going to end up with here when we get this butter and uh, cream cheese and stuff melted is a really rich creamy sauce that kind of covers your noodles and the flavor of this is going to be very very similar to lasagna but you don't have to layer the lasagna noodles and all that stuff I say the flavor is similar to lasagna but this has different ingredients than what I put in my lasagna like I don't put sour cream or cream cheese in my lasagna so it's similar but it is different you can have it in the oven oh I don't know in 20 minutes for sure you're going to want to preheat your oven to 350 and bake it at 350 just until it's bubbly and brown or if you're making it for somebody you know to put in the freezer or you're making it for yourself to put in the freezer i would not put it in the oven now i just put it in the pan and um cover it up and they can put it in the freezer and that way when they bake it well the cheese won't burn on the top and everything will get bubbly and brown you do want to thaw it out in the fridge though before you put it in the oven if you have time i mean it would bake from frozen but it would take for forever and I know folks are going to ask me how long would I have to bake it from frozen. I don't know. Cover it uh, with aluminum foil if it's frozen. Cover it with aluminum foil and bake it for probably 25 or 30 minutes out of the fridge and then take it off and let it brown. Um, and this is only going to take 25 minutes total. 25, 30 minutes, something like that. Just till it gets brown. So less than an hour, you can have dinner. Okay, this is all melted. I don't have any big lumps left in here. And that's all you want. And it's hot, so it's not going to take it long in the oven to bubble. By the time the cheese is brown, everything will be bubbly. So let's go ahead and cut this off. And get it put in our pan in layers. Just dump all your spaghetti mixture in your pan and kind of spread it out now i did um i forgot to tell y'all <laughs> i wiped my pan with butter my casserole pan i wiped with butter really well and i do have one of these in the oven in my lasagna pan and it's glass so you can see what this looks like finished like i said this one here is going to alex for after our baby all right get all that goodness out of there we don't want to leave any of it in there and just kind of spread this out in your pan in an even layer now if you see this you can see why i said you know i wouldn't layer it i would melt it in there because all the spaghetti noodles are good and covered and we're not going to have dried out spaghetti noodles in the edge of our casserole okay now the next step, once we got our oops, once we got our noodles with our cheese, our cream cheese, and our cottage cheese and all that stuff in it, we're just going to dump our sauce right on top of that. So we do have layers for sure. And get all that goodness out of there. And spread that layer out. And you know, if you were on a really tight budget you could cut the meat back in this and not do a full pound or you could double the pasta in it because the cheapest thing in it is the pasta and just kind of stretch all the rest of the stuff now see that's already pretty and it ain't even baked don't even have the cheese on it said so any cheese you want on the top of it would work I like the mozzarella because I like the, the flavors together and it also melts really nice. 
you can cut the cheese back on the top too to save a little money just don't use a whole eight ounces use a cup instead of two cups i mean there's a lot of stuff you can cut back in it and now you would just put this in your 350 degree oven until it's brown probably about 30 35 minutes um I'm going to, though, like I said, wrap this one up and take it to Alex so that she'll have it after her baby's born. Uh, if you take this out of the freezer, it's best to thaw it before you bake it. Um, and if you're starting from cold, cover it and cook it until it's good and hot and then uncover it and brown the cheese in the top. But I do have one in the oven because I want you to see what it looks like finished. It is golden brown. The pasta is, you know, all baked in that cheese sauce. And every, all the flavors are kind of meshed together. This is an absolutely, like I said, delicious dinner. If your family likes spaghetti or lasagna, they're going to love this. And this is good to take, like I said, potlucks, church dinners, uh, any sort of get togethers like that, that, and it's a really, really good take to someone who needs some help. You know, they're, they're not able to cook for themselves. And you can do it like this and take it, or you can do it like this and take it. Whichever way, it's delicious. Everybody's going to love it. And it's going to be one of those, it's one of those things that's really, really good for winter time. It's warm. It's gooey it's good for any time but especially on a cold winter day folks just love it it's comfort food at its best so try this baked spaghetti casserole and i don't know if millionaires really eat spaghetti like this or not but it'll sure make you feel like you're one when you're eating it thank you so very much for joining us in the hillbilly kitchen please don't forget to click like and subscribe before you leave share all of our videos with your friends and until next time, remember to put God first.